Let me start off with a disclaimer that although the automated logic OEM control back view 6 display used in this video is typical to all sold, it is the custom screens that are unique to the unit it is hooked up to. All screens are customized per project and may be different from what yours looks like. What will be similar is how you maneuver inside a screen and between screens as well as how you make changes to points that are adjustable. Please enjoy. This display allows you to see and modify what is going on with your unit. This is a display only and has nothing to do with the operation of your unit beyond being able to access operating values and set points. Let's quickly review the buttons found on the display. These are the on-screen navigation buttons, hot link buttons, numeric keypad, function button, mute button, The red light indicates an active alarm. To acknowledge the alarm and turn the red light off, press and hold FN and then press mute. If the red light does not go out, try it again and it will. When you walk up to the Backview 6 screen that has been idle for more than a couple of minutes, you will be on the standby screen denoted by the S in the top right corner of the screen. From this screen you will be able to see a few key temperatures along with the date and time. Another key piece of information is the job name and factory order number which you will need to give to the service department if calling for assistance. The last line prompts you to press any button to continue. After pressing any button to continue on the standby page, you will be directed to the main menu screen, as shown in this view. Something to remember is all the screens are job specific, so you may or may not have all the screens shown on this display. Let's talk about the alarm hotspot button for a minute, which you will find on almost every screen we use. Pressing the button takes you to the alarm page as shown here. Here you will see the event history listing current alarms, current faults, and return to normal points. If the descriptor given is unclear, contact the Seasons 4 Service Department for help or ask for a job specific list. You will notice the two arrows on the right side of the screen. When these are present, it means there are more lines of text available above or below the four lines shown. Notice brackets around the current line. When present, the value is selectable by pressing enter and directs you to a new page, or if it is a value that is editable, will allow you to make changes. But more about that in a few minutes. Several ways to maneuver from this page. Use the up and down arrows to get the brackets around where you want to get to or use next hotspot button to go through the screens in a round robin fashion. Let's start off by setting the clock. Press the hot button for admin. Here we can move the cursor to the right and select Clock Set by pressing Enter. The display prompts you for the password which is 1111, then Enter. A couple of things to remember. Password is 1111. As previously stated, whatever the bracket is around, is what we can change by pressing the enter key. Right now the brackets are around the hour so pressing the enter gets us to the edit mode where the cursor is under the 1 in 10. Looking at the hot buttons shows us we can increase or decrease the value or we can hit the number on the keypad. 
Once we get it to what we want, we can press Enter or OK to lock it in. Repeat for the remaining items to be changed. When through, simply select the previous hot button, then Home. Let's go to the summary page, your choice of hitting Next or Enter. On the summary page, we try to show all the information needed to see what is going on with your unit on one page. And yes, there's a lot of information. As you scroll down the page, see the up and down arrows on the right side indicating more lines up or down? You will see the fan operating statuses, maybe the operating status of the unit. Heat and cool calls if it is a multi-zone unit then all the temperature and humidity sensors found in the unit. Again, this page contains a lot of information, but from it, you should be able to see how your unit is operating. Notice while scrolling up and down, the brackets would appear indicating a value that could be modified. Hit the Next button and see where we go. The safeties page will list the hardwire status of the safeties for your unit. In this example, we have the shutdown circuit which monitors the fire alarm. Other devices, for example, high static switches, free stats, smoke detectors, etc., reference your unit's electrical ladder diagrams laminated to the control panel door for devices monitored in the safety circuit. Also shown is the A419, A421 DX cooling lockout safety, which indicates whether the compressors are allowed to operate. Let's hit next and see where we go. For our example here, we go to the supply fan page. Notice on all screens you have hot buttons you can use at any time. We are getting into the screens that are very unit dependent and vary greatly, so I will press next to briefly show what screens are available for this unit. After this screen, let's go back to the main screen by hitting home. As you can see, we went through these screens using the next button, but we could have done them by moving the brackets down and selecting that screen we want to look at. Notice that after the last screen found, when we use the next round robin method of moving around, there are some further screens further down. In this case, zones and so forth. We will select zones and talk about what we see there. This is the typical zone page showing the zone number and the current hot deck and cold deck temperatures across the top and some new hot buttons at the bottom. While here, let's talk about how the zone set points are determined. While here, let's talk about how the zone set points are determined. For each zone, you have a base set point, an occupied and unoccupied dead band, and a thermostat slider amount, zone set point adjustment at the stat. Each dead band creates a span that creates a zone heating and cooling set point. The span is the occupied and unoccupied set points with the base set point in the middle. For example, if the base set point is 72 degrees and the occupied dead band is 4 degrees, the zone cooling set point would be 74 degrees, and the heating one would be 70. The adjustment multiplier multiplies the slider adjustment, if applicable, which creates an offset from the base set point. Let's hit the home button and see what comes after the zones.
Schedules. Let's select that. When you select Schedules, you arrive at this screen. On this screen, you can see the current schedule status at the top right. And select whether you want to view, adjust, daily, holiday, or override schedules. Not every project uses the schedules in the unit and depend on the schedules found in your front end system. Let's look at daily since the brackets are around it. The unit is programmed with four daily schedules where you can use one, two, three, or all four depending upon your needs. Schedules one through three are identical, and number four is also identical with one extra step, which we will look at in a minute. First thing to determine is whether we want to use this schedule. Make sure it says use equal yes, and if no, then use equals no. If no, we can move on to the next schedule by hitting the next hot button. If we set use equals yes, then we can adjust the start and stop times and days by using the brackets around the desired field and modifying the values as previously discussed. If the time and day is between the values input then the stat value should be on or off accordingly. Press next until you get to schedule 4, which as mentioned before is special. Yes, it looks the same as 1 through 3, but it has an additional value found at the top right of the screen. If you have a front end energy management system or BAS system and you want the unit to follow the front end schedule, and not the schedules in the controller, then we need to set the schedule for use equals yes and set it for all the days of the week. Then the BAS can write to the continuous point and toggle it from yes to no as needed to start and stop the unit. Please note that schedules 1 through 3 must be set to use equals no and schedule 4 to use equals yes for the remote control to take effect. Let's hit the schedule button and see what's next. Select holiday to view that screen. Set the values for the holidays you wish the unit to be off. Please note the holidays screen prevent the unit from operating under the normal daily schedule they would be following. There are 12 holiday schedules possible. Press the previous button then select override. Use the two override schedules to start the unit on times not normally set in the daily schedules. After hour meetings, weekend work, etc. are some examples. Press the home hot button. Scroll down to the PID parameters selection. The PID parameters found in these screens are the heart of your control system and should be modified with care. A simple number change can make your unit work differently than factory programmed. It is advised that to consult with the Seasons 4 factory if tuning is required. Press home to see what's next. Let's scroll down and select router and from there we will go to the next screen which will be BACnet. The settings on this and subsequent pages should only be made after consulting with the factory. This screen allows for the selection of the communications protocol for the unit. What we are looking for is the plus sign. For this example, it is not shown on this screen. It could be found beside MSTP or if you were to press the IP hot button, could be found next to the IP network. 
Go ahead and press the IP hot button and let's see what's on that page. There is the plus sign next to the IP network number and in our unit that is where it is. If your facility is using BACnet IP instead of BACnet MSTP then the current IP address, subnet, and gateway tell you what the controller is currently using. If using BACnet IP then use the custom IP address, subnet, and gateway to input your desired network information. After the information is entered, switch number two on the IO Pro controller will need to be switched to the left, on. After cycling power, return to this page to ensure that the current IP address information reflects what you just input from the custom address settings. Again, it is highly advised to consult with the factory before making these changes. Press the previous button twice and scroll down to BACnet. This is another screen that before changes are made, the factory should be consulted. If your network needs this device to have a specific device instance number, then set the auto generate device ID to no, and then modify the top line to whatever value you need. Select previous several times to get back to the main menu. These are all the screens for this specific unit, but as stated before, your screens may be different, or you may even have more or less screens but maneuvering around screens and making value changes are the same. And anything with the bracket around it can be selected and or changed. Thank you for watching and remember you can always call the Seasons 4 Service Department for assistance.